Home canning is a big part of many families' food preservation tradition. A much older and less common technique is the process of fermentation, tracing back as far as 1500 BC. Sander Katz is an avid practitioner of this practice, even gaining the nickname Sanderkraut for his first fermented sauerkraut venture. With 14 years experience, Katz proudly promotes the health benefits and amazing tastes that come from fermenting foods and beverages. My name is Sandor Katz, and I have been living in Middle Tennessee for about 17 years. Um, I really moved down here because I met some other folks who lived down here, and it was just a time when I was getting ready to make a, make a change in my life. And although I had always liked the tastes of fermented foods and even had some notions that they were um, particularly healthful uh, foods to eat, it wasn't until I was involved in having a garden that I ever had a reason to learn how to ferment food myself. Fermentation is the transformative action of microorganisms on foods. Um, you know, not every microbial transformation of food results in something uh, that is desirable to eat. Most of the time when we discard food, when we uh, reject it as being rotten or spoiled, it's because of microbial transformations that have, uh, that have begun to happen on our foods. So what all fermentation processes amount to is simple manipulations of environmental conditions. So if this is exposed to the air, the molds can grow. But if we can, um, if we can protect this from the air by submerging it under liquid, then the molds can't grow and the acidifying bacteria grow instead. Fermentation as, as an art really is as old as agriculture. Agriculture and fermentation really um, you know, evolved hand in hand, and, and fermentation is used all around the world. Uh, like, you know, really, I, I would say that any foods that you find um, identified as gourmet foods, any foods that you find in uh, gourmet food shops, are the products of fermentation. So, you know, to give you a quick rundown on what that, that looks like, um, cheeses. There exist non-fermented cheeses, very mild, plain cheeses with names like farmer's cheese, but any cheese with any significant amount of flavor is the product of fermentation, and it's a strategy for uh, making the milk more stable. Cheddar cheese can sit on your kitchen counter for months as a stable food. Milk cannot. I practice many different kinds of fermentation. I, I, I make lots of, uh, you know, foods that, um, you know, in, uh, you know, in our American context would be considered exotic foods, uh, you know, Indonesian tempeh, Japanese miso. Um, uh, you know, I make lots of foods that, um, uh, you know, would be um, considered somewhat, uh, you know, obscure or exotic in, in our context. But really what got me interested in all of this was, um, you know, what I would say is a very all-American food, which is sauerkraut. Um, and that was the first fermented food that I learned how to make, and I have really been in continuous production with sauerkraut for the past 16 years or so. Um, and I am very devoted to sauerkraut, and I love sauerkraut, and I think that it is a, a powerfully nutritious and healing food. The steps in making sauerkraut are uh, extremely simple. First, you chop up the vegetables, Secondly, you salt them and bruise them. Then you'll stuff them into your vessel. Um, in this case, it'll be a jar, and then you wait. That's as simple as it is. Um, the people who came to the United States from, um, from Germany, from Russia, from the former Yugoslavia, from all across Asia, um, from Scandinavia, people who came to the United States from many different regions of the world brought uh, fermented vegetables with them. And so it's an all-American food in that, you know, it's become its own fusion in the United States. All of these, uh, you know, immigrant groups made it in their own style, and it's just, um, 
uh, you know, it's just eaten in so many contexts. You know, if you buy a if you buy a hot dog, they offer you sauerkraut with with it. I mean, it's really just become part of the um, uh, you know Amer American diet. I would say that fermentation. Um, uh, you know, is another aspect of that, um, you know, strategy of, um, uh, you know, eating local food to, you know, get the nutrients that are in the local soil and, um, you know, really get the most local, uh, you know, influences on your body. And then you're also incorporating the, the local uh, microorganisms. Um, so I, I actually think that it's 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 a way of um, you know really um, almost literally becoming your environment. You know when you cultivate the growth of the you know bacteria that are naturally occurring on the vegetables that you're eating, and use those bacteria in order to pre-digest the vegetables and create enough acidity to preserve the vegetables and then eat those, then you are incorporating, you know, not only the locally grown vegetables, but the locally, the, the local soil organisms that are part of those vegetables. Um, so, so, uh, so I, I actually think that, you know, fermentation enhances that aspect of um, uh, eating local food.